Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain. And I'm Alex. And today we're going to be doing a battle report for Wings of Glory Tripods and Triplanes. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, I, th I think this is the first one we've actually gotten recorded for Wings of Glory Tripods and Triplanes. Yep. Uh, but we've been playing this game for a while and this game's a lot of fun. Uh, so we thought we'd bring you guys a battle report. And uh, funny story, uh, this is our third attempt to record this battle report. So I hope this one actually works. Yes, we'll see. <laughs> Third time to charm. We've had technical difficulties both other times, and now uh, uh, we, we feel like it may be cursed to never actually. So I don't know if anyone's going to actually see this. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, who knows? But uh, so we're playing uh, the scenario we're playing from the main book. Let me pull it out over here uh, from the main Tripods and Triplanes book is uh, the second last scenario in the book, The Hunters and the Hunted, where I get... Uh, two tripods, and Alex will be controlling three planes. Uh, we're using the variant tripods and planes, so Alex gets to also have a, uh, a a ace ability. Correct for each plane, which is really good for for balancing the yeah. field with the tripods. So the tripods I'm taking are the Squid Mark Three and the Scarab Mark Two, which were both available for the uh, the variant tripods, the second invasion variant. And the Scarab Mark II is a kind of slow, tough, lots of hull, limited shields, lots of smoke launchers, single heat ray, but a big heat ray. It's got the big heat ray. Right. So it's got a good range in the front with the big heat ray. Everything else is, is throwing the poisonous acidic smoke all over the place. Whereas the Squid Mark III, uh, this thing is the complete opposite. It is ludicrously fast, ludicrously maneuverable. Only has like one smoke, one or two smoke launchers, but then everything else is heat rays, like in every direction. But small heat rays. Right. The small heat rays, which is pretty darn decent. And Alex, what do you got for your force? Um, running with, they're all uh, A damage deck planes, so single seat planes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the variant calls for, so we got three of those. Even though this one looks big, it's still a single seat A deck plane. Uh, going with the Sop with Camel, running with Tripod Hunter is the uh, ace <clears throat> ability. Um, it's a cool one at the... Uh, Depending on how you, how you hit the tripod, if the uh, damage deck is drawn in a certain way, tripod falls down. Yeah, you like you. Uh, in addition to doing damage, you draw like an extra card, extra right? Extra card, and if it's not a zero, a tripod ends up ends up falling. Yeah, it doesn't actually do damage; it just makes them fall. Right, right. which well, is which is deadly though, because because then when the tripod falls, of course, it takes it a turn to get up, and while it's down, it has no shields. Yes. So. Uh, That's the thing. The second and biggest plane is the uh, Machi M5 in, mm -hmm. in a uh, looks like an Italian. It's uh, a big Italian seaplane. It's which is uh, it's a fun plane. It's actually faster than it looks. That has heat ray dodging, which allows it to ignore uh, damage from a heat ray. Um, How many times? Twice per game. Wow. Um, and it only works if the you discard a, a, the Heat Rage damage card. You can choose to discard it and draw another one. So it's a little bit of push your luck. But oh, okay. if it's really bad, you can get rid of it and hope for a not so bad. I don't think, you haven't used that ability I haven't before. used that one. I came really close last time to using it. Um, That's and, a cool ability, though. And I wanted to do, uh, I want to give it a shot this time. Yeah. And then my uh, third plane is, oh yeah, the, uh, the Fokker. This is uh, the, the, the triplane. The triplane, the Red Baron uh, painted triplane. Um, and he has Stuntman is the uh, ace ability, which allows the plane to actually do like a, a strafing action as it's, it turns and fires. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, with this one, it, you don't actually turn the plane sideways. It just no. sort of increases the arc out to 90 degrees for firing? Right. The mechanic, the game mechanic is it just increases <clears throat> the arc all the way to the 90 degrees to the side. It's yeah. supposed to mimic a sort of a, a maneuver in where you're doing a strafing as you slide and then return back to... Uh, like a side slip kind of maneuver. Right. And it can only be done in between straight maneuver cards. So you have to kind of plan for it. Now, is it uh, is it a limited number of times? Um, no, it just has recovery counters. So, oh, okay. So the Tripod Hunter and the Heat Raid Dodge can only be used twice per game. Okay. Stuntman can be refreshed uh, after four. But you have to do straight, side slip, straight kind of thing? Uh, correct. Okay, interesting. So we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, so without any further ado, I think we're going to take you guys over the table, and uh, yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna get going on this battle. <sighs> 
Okay, so here we go with turn one. We did our setup and got ready to go. Uh, turn one mostly comprised of a lot of moving up as both sides moved into the middle of the field. The one big hit was, as you're about to see it here, the big heat ray managed to connect with the Sopwith Camel. Moving into turn two, uh, we get some more firepower actually starting to connect as the small heat ray from the Mark III hits the Sopwith Camel and catches it on fire. You're going to see that happening right here. Uh, the Mark uh, II also wants smoke and manages to hit the machi uh, while the sop with camel manages to fire and connect on the shields of the mark II. Uh, then after that all happens we're about to see some more fire here and there is a smoke miss while the big heat ray at close range hits with the sop with camel and the sop with camel itself hits the mark II, bypassing the shield and causing a wounded pilot reaction which of course i had to uh, revealed my opponent. Now the camera moved a bit here. I didn't notice until there uh, that was Nico was playing around by the legs of the tripod. Uh, then the small heat ray missed the Machi and the Mark II recharged. Uh, uh, rounding out uh, turn two, the Fokker hit the Mark III bypassing the shields. Now here on turn three, uh, we started off with fire damage on the Sop with Camel and the big heat ray hit the Fokker being at close range, they revealed a, a seven damage. The Mark III did the small heat ray on the Fokker. As you're about to see, the small heat ray caused an explosion. The Fokker was destroyed. The Sopwith was able to fire at short range on the Mark II, and the Mark III then recharged while the Machi shot the Mark III, bypassing the shields. Moving into round four, uh, fire damage was done on the Sopwith, and smoke from the Mark II directly hit the Sopwith. Uh, the Sopwith then returned fire and hit the Mark III. Uh, then the tripods overlapped, causing a big issue with me. I had to pull them back, uh, and the Mark III missed. It uh, probably because of my miscalculation there. Uh, the Mark III then smoked the Machi. Uh, and then the big heat ray uh, hit the Sopwith and killed it dead. The Machi hit the Mark III, bypassing the shields. Moving into turn five here, the Machi was able to shoot the Mark II where there was no shields doing some damage. The Mark III uh, hit with the heat ray, and the Mark II hit with the big heat ray. At this point, the, the Machi is just sort of flying back and forth as it gets hit by smoke. Um, it moves, it gets hit by the big heat ray. There wasn't a whole lot it can do at this point because since it was the only plane left on the board, the tripods were able to maneuver themselves to to make sure that the Machi could only hit them in the shields while they were able to unload and make it really run the gauntlet back and forth, hitting it again and again with those heat rays and the smoke until finally Alex surrendered. Okay, so uh, so that was it. That was a hell of a game. That was a great game. There was like a lot back and forth. Right. Uh, at the end there, uh, uh, Alex called it because he just had one plane and could not... I didn't realize this, but what your plane couldn't turn in one direction? I couldn't turn left anymore. Yeah, my last plane was unidirectional. So basically, you couldn't get around my shields, and I had both my tripods still alive. Correct. That said, one tripod had two hole left, and the other had three hole left. So it was that close. Did some damage, yeah. Yeah, basically one decent shot away from killing either or uh, either tripod. Right. Uh, just because I managed to angle my tripods enough that you had to split up the damage pretty evenly, mm -hmm. you weren't able to bring either one down, and then. Um, I mean, I, I think I think a big part of it was how quickly I was able to bring the Fokker down after the yes. um, the Sopwith caught on fire. Yeah, so the Sopwith was limping along, but still doing pretty good, all things considered. Considering he was on fire. He was on fire yeah. and had considerable amount of damage. Um, uh, yeah, but those two shots on the... On the Fokker. The Fokker on the Red Baron's uh, style plane there was... Uh, <laughs> that was devastating. That was, I think he only got... I think that plane only got one shot off the whole game. And then he got shot twice and died. Twice and, and died. Yeah, yeah, he, right. he two, 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 two consecutive heat rounds of heat, of heat ray hits, and that was it. And what, what one was a seven, the other was an explosion. That Which was enough. Equivalent of a seven on a on him, yeah, on a Fokker, on, yeah. on a Fokker so, DR one. Yeah, the little Fokker went down. <laughs> I really early in the game, which was uh, unfortunate. I had, I knew I had caused some damage though, so I was keep uh, hoping that I could. Bring one, of, bring one of them down at least, and then I like at least make it an even fight. But. I I was surprised by how long the 
the Sopwith stayed in the fight after he'd taken some big hits, some special damage. I knew he took special damage because you were looking it up. Right. And then also was on fire. And I was like, oh, he's fine. I'll just go shoot the Fokker. And I went and shot up the Fokker. And, like, he's still flying around. <laughs> Like not he, yeah, dead. He, yeah, he did. He caused quite a bit of damage. No, not. I mean, nothing like that first hit, but caused some damage afterwards, and mm-hmm. did, a, did a good job. That, that's that is like a great plane oh, for yeah. a single seat plane because it's the very Campbell. durable oh, yeah. and it and it's actually pretty fast and maneuverable, and uh, it's a great plane. And it unfortunately, it uh, I wasn't able to use the tripod hunter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used it twice, but it wasn't didn't get any success. It, no with success. It. That's, that's really where that that yeah. card is really like the ace in the hole, no pun intended. Because if you knock down a tripod, then right. it's got he's down with no shields. Uh, right. Luckily, yeah, the first time it hit my shields and mm-hmm. it didn't cause uh, any shield loss, so I didn't fall down. Right. The second time it hit me in the hole, and, and, and I drew a zero. Right. And so, like, it, just luck of the draw did not knock anyone down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I ignored the Machi almost the whole game because he had the ability to dodge. The blast, I was like, I'll deal yeah. with him last. Right. Let me take out the right. sop with you as tripod hunter and the um and the Fokker who has like the least hull of all your guys. Right. And that actually worked out well yeah, for you me. Did, yeah, dude. Yeah, your plan worked really well. I was I was hoping to try to harass your your smaller tripod with the, the machi a little longer, but you were able to re engage and, and two double whammies on my other planes and that was that was about it. So there you have it. That was uh, that was our in, our battle report for tripods and triplanes, the hunters and the hunted scenario, mm-hmm. uh, using the uh, Mark II and Mark III Scarab and Squid versus the we had the Fokker uh, DR1, the Machi, and the Sopwith Camel, uh, all single seat uh, A damage deck. I think games. I think because um, I was gonna say I've, I've I've won the last few games we've done with tripods and triplanes. I think the next game we do, uh, whether or not we record it, we got to start mm. letting you use some of the two seaters so you can have the rear guns. Uh, I think that's a good way to maybe increase the firepower on the planes. They're not much bigger like hull wise or anything, but they right. get that extra ability to fly over and shoot back, right? Which right. is pretty decent. I think might might help to even up the score a little bit. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, today this game was the best I think I've done with mm-hmm. the the A deck planes, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough. it's tough bringing these things down. Fair enough. Right. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this battle report, you'd like to see us do more battle reports of various games like this, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And down in the links below, you can find a link to my Patreon if you're in a position to would like to support the channel, a link to my Teespring store if you'd like to get yourself some cool Board Game Captain merch, and a link to BoardGameCaptain.com, which is a great hub for all things Board Game Captain. And until next time, game Game on. on.